Hello all, today we'll be seeing a new use case about credit card risk assessment. This particular use case has been, you know, put up in Kaggle competition. So I've taken that particular use case and I'm trying to show it to you, like what is this exactly, uh, this use case called as credit card risk assessment. So to begin with, uh, I'm going to read the data set. Uh, uh, don't worry about this data set and this particular Jupyter Notebook file. I'll be uploading this in my GitHub profile. I mean, in my GitHub so that you can download uh, coding code from there itself. So initially when I'm reading this particular data set, I'm just going to tell you about this particular use case, what exactly it is. So as soon as we read this particular data set, you will be seeing that you have various features like ID, limit, uh, limit balance, text, education, marriage, age, pay underscore zero, pay underscore two, pay underscore three, pay underscore four, and many other features. And one, important feature that you have which is your dependent feature is basically called as default.payment.next.month now this particular feature basically indicates that whether the person is going to default in the next month with respect to the payment of the credit card bills right so this particular dependent features we are going to predict based on all these particular independent features of any person who are actually taking the credit card so this is all about the use case and over here this will also involve some kind of data pre-processing. So I've already done that. Uh, you can just download this code material and have a look, but let us go ahead and try to see what all I've actually done. I've basically applied some machine learning algorithms like XGBoost, and I was able to get better accuracy with respect to XGBoost, but uh, when I tried with random forest, it was a little bit less. So initially to, with the, I mean, initially to begin with, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to drop this ID column because this ID is just a unique identifier. I don't require it uh, in order to just, uh, you know, uh, implement this particular use case. So first of all, my step is basically just to drop this ID from access is equal to one. For that, I'll just be using the code called as credit underscore DF dot drop ID comma access is equal to one because access is equal to one specifies the columns. Okay. Then what I'm going is that over here, you can see there are some columns like pays underscore zero pay underscore two pay underscore three pay underscore four. Now you should see that pay underscore one is not there. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to rename this pay underscore zero to pay underscore one. This will actually give a, you know, a good column name instead of having pay underscore zero. Okay. So uh, it is just for that. It is okay. It is fine if you don't want to do it, but just in uh, addition to that, I'm just renaming the column, changing the name of pay underscore column to pay underscore one to make the number equal. Okay. So for that, I'll be using the same data set called as credit underscore DF and I'm going to use dot rename. And there I'm going to provide my column names from pay zero. I'm going to replace it to pay one. Okay. And internally I'm trying to replace in that same particular data set. So I've kept it as in place is equal to zero. True. Now, after that, after executing this particular instruction, if you go and see the head part again, now in this particular head, you can see that now pay underscore zero has been changed to pay underscore one. And this is what it has actually done with respect to this particular above code. After that, you have one uh, column called as education. Okay. In education, you basically have different type of category features or category labels. You can say some of the labels are like two, one, three, five, four, zero, six. Okay. Now, in order to understand what this particular labels are, what we are going to do is that we are seeing uh, there are a lot of categories like category labels like two, one, three, five, four, six. So basically, like one, two, three, four, five, six. Let me just uh, make you understand what this one, two, three, four, five, six uh, is basically uh, saying. And this particular information it can be retrieved from the Kaggle also. One basically uh, indicates that uh, the person is from school. Two basically indicates that uh, the person is from high school. Three basically indicates that the person is from college. And uh, okay, the, uh, sorry, it, it starts with, uh, you know, zero. Uh, just let me verify it because I've just mapped from zero to four. Okay, perfect. Now over here, you just imagine that uh, what this particular data set basically says that if the education is one, that basically means that the person is from school. Two basically means the person is from high school. Three basically means the person is from college. Okay. And four basically means that it is from basically from university. Okay. Now this is the basically basic information. Five and six was not actually mentioned. So what we are considering that, uh, uh, the, the, the category is like zero, five, six. We are all, we will be mapping it to four. The reason we are mapping it to four is because that we don't have that particular information about that. And we are considering that zero, five, six uh, category labels also belong to university levels. So for that, what I'm doing, I'm just, uh, you know, removing the unwanted category feature and I'm mapping it to four. 
So for that, I'm just writing this particular step, which is called as from credit underscore DF, which is my data set. I'm taking the education and I'm mapping wherein my zero category is basically mapped to four. One will get mapped to one, two will get mapped to two, three will get mapped to three, four will get mapped to four. But when you see over here, five is getting mapped to four, six is getting mapped to four. So that basically means that I'm considering zero, five, zero, four, five, six as my university level. Remaining all are school, high school, and uh, uh, college. Okay, so that is what I'm actually doing with respect to the education. And similarly, with with respect to marriage, uh, there are also different different categories like one, two, and three. Uh, there is also category like zero. This zero uh, category is basically we are considering that. Uh, Three is basically saying that the person is married. So uh, this mapping is also happening based on the information that is basically given in the Kaggle. So I'm mapping zero to three also. So make this particular small changes. Uh, you can get that particular data set uh, link and all the description about the fields in the Kaggle. I'll also share you the link uh, in the um, in my YouTube channel itself in the description. You can get it from there and you can find out all the information. Okay. So my uh, Two mappings that I'm using basically for education and other one is for marriage. Now, the other thing that after this I've done is basically called as standard scaling. Now standard scaling, the reason I'm doing it, um, you know, I'm just, I'm trying to scale down all the feature values that are present over here with respect to all the features that I have. Okay. All the features that I have, I'm trying to scale down into semi unit. Now I want to ask you a very easy, simple question that is this step required? Please do comment down uh, for me in this particular video. Is this step required if I'm using XGBoost algorithm? Whether any scaling functions is basically required for our data set in this particular scenario? Uh, I'm, and again, I'm saying that I'm using the machine learning algorithm called as XGBoost. Please comment down and please let me know whether we have to use this. And then I'll come up with the next video, which is called as Why do we do the standard scaling? And when should we do scaling? and how should we should do the scaling. Everything will be explained in my next video. But just to let me know whether this particular step is basically required or not. So here, what I'm doing, I'm actually scaling down all my independent features, okay? And after that, what I'm doing is that I'm just creating my independent and dependent feature. This is my dependent feature. This is my independent feature. So I have all my independent feature in X variable and all my dependent feature in Y variable. Now. Before applying XGBoost, I'm trying to create, I'm trying to use some hyperparameter optimization. So these are all my parameters that I'm playing with in with respect to XGBoost. One is learning rate. Um, then what is the max depth of my decision tree that is basically getting used in uh, um, in my XGBoost. Then I have minimum underscore child underscore weight. Then I have gamma. And then I have column sample by tree. Okay. So all these particular features I'm basically using. And for applying the hyperparameter optimization, I'm basically using randomized search CV. And it is very simple to actually use randomized search CV. First of all, I just have to import XGBoost. This particular function will basically calculate how much time that my randomized search CV will take in order to run that particular, uh, you know, the fit method for randomized search CV. So this is the function that I have actually uh, created for that. So here it is. I'm making a classifier which is called as from XGB classifier, which is my XGBoost classifier, and then. For this classifier, you can see that I've not provided any parameters because this parameters will be selected by randomized search CV. So in my next step, what I'm doing, I'm using this randomized search CV. The first parameter is what type of classifier I'm using. The second parameter is basically what kind of parameters I have to use. The parameters I've basically defined it over here. For all these parameters I'm going to use over here. So I've mentioned over here, how many iteration of cross valid, how many iterations I want to go work with. I've written five. What is my scoring that I want to look at? After it, I, I I can either go with accuracy or I can also go with ROC underscore AUC. Then I have N underscore jobs is equal to minus one. This will help you to use all the core processor in your system and how many cross validation you basically need to have. That is basically CV is equal to five. I've taken five cross validation with verbose is equal to three. That will basically mean that it will show you different kind of information when the uh, randomized search CV runs, you know, in the fit method. So here it is, my randomized search CV object is created or initialized. In the next step, I'm taking the start timer and then I'm actually doing this randomized search CV dot fit and then I am again ending my time. Okay, so as soon as I run this, it will take you around five minutes because I have a powerful system over here. It hardly took me 17.2 seconds. Okay, now you can see all the 
uh, how much time it has basically taken and how many times of folds and how many cross validation it has basically done okay then after running this all you have to do is that use this randomized and random underscore search object try to find out what is the best estimator then this all basically indicates that these are the features that you have to use inside the Xgboost classifier. Copy everything of this, okay? And then again, initialize your classifier by using this only and paste it over here. That's it. After you paste it, your classifier will run. Then you apply the cross validation, which is your cross val score. Inside the cross val score, use this particular classifier, which you have specified. Put your independent features, dependent feature. Put your cross validation value as 10 or how many you want, like 5, 10, 15, it depends on you, and try to see the score. Now, here you can see that all the score are basically somewhere around 80%, 81%, 82%. And if you go and try to find out the mean, that is basically uh, showing you uh, 0.8 to, that is 82% uh, is the accuracy mean, and that is what is basically specifying your overall accuracy and guys this is a kaggle competition which i have actually taken i have also uploaded this in the kaggle itself and uh, i was able to get the ranking somewhere around 430 that basically means uh, from out of 1800 so I, I was in the top 430 and initially i got 80 percent but by applying hyperparameter optimization i was able to get 82 percent and you know i was able to get my top ranking within 300 ranks uh, and this is the steps that I've actually followed for doing all these particular steps for the credit card risk assessment. So I hope you like this particular videos, guys. Um, I'll be uploading everything this in the GitHub. Link will be provided in my YouTube description box. Um, if you like this particular video, please do subscribe to the channel. Uh, don't forget to press the bell uh, icon so that uh, whenever I upload any videos, get the notification. Um, then I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great day ahead. Never give up. Keep on learning. Thank you one and all. God bless you all.